how to go about um, creating a course, teaching it to people, and actually generating reports from that teaching. So your job as a PFF impact ambassador is to find a place in your community where you find young people. You will go there and then you'll be able to make them understand that they need to be leaders. In order to help you do this, we are giving you an impact fund. A proposal is literally just a description of how you want to go about the event. That's all. That's all the proposal is. Today we'll be going in depth to the proposal. We'll teach you the templates that we are using, how you fill the form and everything. Uh, Jeff has already introduced us to the proposal writing on Thursday. We are building on what we've already learned from him. So if you have not listened to Jeff's lectures, he's on YouTube at the moment. I shared the links with you earlier today. So it will be useful for you to go, go listen to that talk again. Um, maybe after now. Don't do it now. Wait, wait, do it after now, right? <laughs> Right, so go listen to Jeff's lecture, connect it to the lectures you'll be taking today and be able to create a proposal that is a winning proposal. If your proposal is well done, you may not even need the impact fund. Somehow you'll be able to connect the dots when your proposal is well done. And that is what we look out for. We're going to give the funds to the person who is able to curate the best proposal However, we know that the best proposal funds itself. So there are other um, runner-up prizes, but we'll talk about that towards the end of this event. Now, in order to enable us to do a good job of talking about this, I'll be inviting Afwa Asamwa, my good friend, to help us talk about it. Afwa is a wonderful person. Um, she has experience working with youth and young people. She's a law student in the School of Oriental and African Studies, London. And um, I, I feel like there is a lot we have to learn from Afua Wolf. Together, I will be able to talk about this. Um, there, is, there are parts of her rendering that I will be talking about as well. However, she will be able to take the bulk of what we'll be talking about today. So I will have you pay attention to what she has to say, especially as she takes you through the journey of how to do a proposal. We have already sent the formal, the, what she's going to be talking, talking about now, you already have it in your email addresses, except if the email addresses you supply to us is not correct. In that way, we'll advise you to send us an email at the Precious Fountain Foundation at gmail.com. Precious Fountain Foundation at gmail.com. Send us an email. Email inbox us on any of our messages on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Chat us up on Telegram or WhatsApp. Our email address is on the chat. Let us know if, for example, you've not been getting all the emails you've been sending, then we'll send you everything. What she's going to be talking about today, you already have it in your email. So if you want to look at it as she's talking about it, you can be looking at it, looking at your own copy and all that, but it's best to pay attention to what she has to say. So um, the next voice you'll be hearing will be Afwas. She's going to take off, take off from there. Thank you very much. Okay, can you hear me? If you can, just, I don't know, like, Use your reaction to just raise your hand, please. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna start. So today's session um, is on self-discovery, understanding purpose and commissioning. Um, so I'll mainly be taking the first two, the self-discovery and understanding purpose. Um, and then at the end, we'll be doing the commissioning. Um, you can raise your hands. I'm sorry, you can put your hands down. Thank you so much. 
Cool. So my name is Afwa Nkansa Asamoa. Um, like Prochi said, I'm a law student um, and I've had like a lot of, I guess, like experience working with young people. I myself being a young person, having been through different leadership courses um, and what has been very pivotal like or quite important um, for me and my journey is that someone took the time took the money to invest in me um, and that's basically what we're now doing for other people so this whole boot camp has been about training the trainer so you can go and train other people um, and I'm basically here to tell you if you didn't know that training young people is like one of the best decisions to ever make um, in your life because you're training of course the future workforce and um, you're training the future society and it's just an important investment to make and I really do want to say um, thank Thank you to everyone who is deciding to participate because um, the need that we see here or the need that PFF is seeing here is a great need um, and you've basically availed yourself um, to say that I want to be part of the solution. So yeah, so my name is Afwa, like I said, you can find me on LinkedIn if you have any further questions. Um, I realise that I speak quite fast sometimes so please if you want me to maybe go back or slow down um in your reactions you have those options so please make use of that right so today we're basically talking about the impact form i'll be talking about that in a lot of detail and i'll also give you the opportunity to ask questions um maybe like line by line maybe you're like oh i don't understand this how do i do this like that's the point of today's session um and the other thing that i'll be doing is providing a summary of all the other sessions like in quite like quite briefly and um, so if you haven't been here you'll be able to do so or be able to have like an understanding um, of what has been spoken about to you know contextualize this boot camp um that's the first one but also um if you've missed something and you basically want to go over that like the summary um, is there and um, some of the um trainers are here today so during the their sessions for the summary I can invite them to um, basically like, take any questions if you have any um, this session is going to be very very interactive um, so I will say do get like of course like your pen and paper or whatever um, equipment you're using to write down um, to to write um, but then also not just for you asking questions I'm going to be also asking you a lot of questions so yeah Right, so what should we expect in this session? Um, A, the session is going to be very practical, it's going to be quite reflective as well, it's going to be interactive and it's going to be action oriented. Um, so everything is going to be about you doing something because that's the whole point um, of this. Um, lastly, your voice needs to be heard. Um, if you're going to be training other people, um, we need to hear what you have to say. We need to know that you feel comfortable and confident in this space um, to be able to, I guess, like share your ideas, like talk to other people about what they have to say about their ideas as well. Um, so you, I guess, like you can grow on this journey. Um, so that's mainly what the session is about. So, right. Alpha, um, yes, I would, I would like you to take um, your speed down a little so that you can tell everyone. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so to start, um, we're going to do an icebreaker. So I'm going to ask um, the moderators to help me make um, breakout rooms. So we're going to split everyone into different breakout rooms. And the task is quite simple. This is just like a fun exercise for you to get to know other people. I know that PFF already has um, a group chat um, for people to get to, I guess, like interact, um, but you may not necessarily have heard from other people. Um, so the task is very, very simple. It's not necessarily um, geared to the subject of um, this boot camp. It's just to know other people, basically. Um, so the task is to list as many things as possible that you have in common with the other people that you're going to be in the breakout rooms with um so you have five minutes um and in those five minutes you're basically supposed to list as many things as possible please try to count the things that you're going to be listing um and then we'll come back into the main session and the group that basically has the most things that they've managed to list um 
basically wins. It's just like a fun task. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and ask, I believe, Jeff to help me put people into breakout rooms and then I'll start the timer for five minutes. So we've just created breakout rooms for everyone. So um, you have an invite to join a breakout room. So just join. Hello, everyone. Hello, Vivian. Hello. How are you doing? Are you the only one in this room? No, sir. Who else is here? One, two, three. Right. So um, who would take down? Um, who would take out, who would take down the write up for us? Who would be like our secretary or something? I'll do it. Okay. Vivian, right? Yes, sir. Cool. So, Fortune, how are you doing? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, what do we have in common? Tell me. Let's be quick. Um, I write. Okay. Cool. Do you write? Are you starting? With Who else writes? I write, but not too frequently. Okay. Who else is in this room? We have Blessing, Tolu Alope, and Thomas Joseph, Yanu, then Ileri. Oh, Ileri. Right. Larry. Thomas. Larry, sorry. Thomas, Larry, you all can tell us what you think. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Let us list things that we, are, we, have, we all have in common. Um, sorry. I write and I design. Can you? Yes, yes, I can. So we all, we all right here. Yes. Um, talking about design, I also do graphic design. Okay. Wow. Should yeah. I put that in? Well, I don't, I don't do graphic design. Who else does graphic design in here? <laughs> Mm, I do gra sorry, I do graphic design and web design too. Okay, so Vivian, note that down. Okay, sir. So we have graphic designing, web designing, writing. Um, talking. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> How are we doing? Um, the people in this room, can you unmute yourselves? Hello? Hello? Yes, so can we start contributing? What do we find that we have in common?
Should, should we say it or we should just inbox it? No, I one person it's should be like a secretary for us. So I nominate Ireolua to be the secretary. Ireolua, okay. are you there? <laughs> Right. It's like it's just me and you, David, that is in this room at the moment. Okay, sir. Many of them, many of the others. Thank, thank God has been please. Thank God is here too. Hi, thank God. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Thank God. I see Isaac Semeco says please to read. If your network is difficult to join at the moment, you can just type in the chat. Isaac Semeco says he likes reading. So, um, could you please put that down for him then? Maybe. Hello, David. Yes, sir. So we have somebody in the chat who says he likes to. He likes to read. Okay. Who else wants to talk? Who else wants to talk? Hi, everyone. Good evening. Okay. Introduce yourself to us first. Introduce yourself to us first. Um, Daisy by name. Oh, Daisy, how are you doing? Oh, Daisy, how are you doing? I'm fine. Right, so tell us. Yes. Right. So tell us what okay, you... my hobbies are reading novels, especially writing and um, watching movies. Those are what I love doing. Right. Okay. okay. So can you keep this room moderated? Okay, who else wants to tell us what they find? Like something we can all find as say we have. Oh yes, okay, I like that for my social media too. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I like that. Okay, go ahead. Um, I like listening to music. Mm, I like watching movies and reading also because I have to. I'm a medical student too. <laughs> That, that is number one priority. Right. So we are closing the breakout rooms in 43 seconds. I like traveling too. So let's say we have traveling, reading. Uh, do we have writing? Yes, we do. Okay, cool. So let's put that too. So 27 seconds and we're all back to the group. So if you are called up, you can just tell us what you feel like is uh, the thing that we you feel like everyone in your group likes to do. So yeah, so this girl done. So see you in the bigger room, bye bye. Okay, I think we're all back now. Um, yes, we're all back. So we had four, four different breakout rooms. So if you were in room one, um, if anyone can tell me or just put it in the chat, how many different things you had in common for room one?
Is there any representative of room one? Oh, thank you, David. Oh, did you only have four different things in room one? Uh, okay, that's fine. Um, what about room two? Yes, Kelvin. Okay, I would like to say something for room two. Though I actually, honestly, I wasn't able to write those things down, but I can say for sure that at least we, we had the things we had in common. We had music, we had um, uh, listening to music, reading and writing, personal growth and friendly, and that, I think that's what I can remember now, but I wasn't able to actually write everything down. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so room one had four things and room two had, I think Jeff is saying 28 things. Um, I don't know if that's room two. Um, anyone in room three? Okay, room three, we have writing, graphic designing, web designing, researching, and a passion for change. Thank you. Vivian, that's that's a lot. Um, and finally, room four. Anything in common? Anyone for room four? Okay, I'm not really getting anything from room four. So I think the best team would have to be room two. Yeah, I think we have something in the chat. Oh, okay. Oh, you're right in there. Purpose, dreaming, ideas, love for children and solving problems. So I think that's one, two, three, four, five, five different things. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you to everyone who participated. Um, I guess like that was just to show the similarities that you can have in common um, with different people who are on this journey with you. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen again. Okay, so um, there we go. Right, so why are we here? Um, like I've said earlier on, the reason we're here um, is to solve problems. Um, and the reason we're also here to solve problems is to be the solution. Um, and I think that's also for us to think about our own agency in solving the problems. Um, that's to say that if we're taken out of the equation, with the solution still be there? Um, one thing that is important to note is that um, in solving a problem is very important that you are able to define the problem as specifically um, as you as you can um, with like a very, um, if you like, tight focus, um, because that would help you to be able to provide a targeted solution. So like Sop said earlier on, PFF submission is to meet the needs of disadvantaged people through education. Um, and what we're doing here is meeting a need. This is not a want. Education is not, oh, I, I, you know, I just want to go to school. And this is actually a need that people have. Right. To talk more about the educational need um, on the continent that we're, we're basically living on, um, Africa is a massive continent. And I think sometimes when we look at maps, and we just look at the geographical land mass. Um, Africa is depicted quite small in relation to other continents or in relation to other countries. Um, and the reason I'm giving you this picture is for you to see 
that if the continent is that massive with like so many different people living on the continent, then clearly the educational need is also really massive. Um, and therefore being part of the solution that I've spoken on earlier on is very important. So this is also another activity, but we don't need breakout rooms for this. And um, this is to identify needs. Um, on the picture here at the top um, is a, a picture of um, some Fulani school children in, in Nigeria. Um, and the picture here at the bottom is of some children, I believe in the Bronga Hafra region of Ghana. Um, and the reason I chose these two specific communities was because um, they sometimes have like low educational provisions because they have specific vulnerabilities. Um, so I want us to think of some of the communities that we know that may have a low education provision, um, for example, what, and why they may have those um, low education provisions. So does anyone have like, or can anyone think of any kind of community or any kinds of people um, that may be specifically vulnerable um, maybe because of the way they live um, in, in the sense of like accessing education. Anyone? Okay, so I have in the group chat, we have internally displaced persons um, in camps in Nigeria. Um, we also have um, Drobonto in the Ashanti region of Ghana. Um, we also have orphan children um, who have to work on the streets to survive in Nigeria. Any other people, groups who have specific low education provisions? Yes, we have the Ozochi community. Um, I think that's also in Nigeria. Yes, you are permitted to speak. I think I um, unmuted you, Abu. Okay. Um, my name is actually Fortune. I couldn't change the name. I made a mistake right. earlier. Yes. So, yes. Um, I mentioned internally displaced persons camps in Nigeria, especially Northern Nigeria. They are very, very, um, should I say disadvantaged of education because of the unstable conditions of security around them. So, and lack of education has made them vulnerable to diseases, you know, um, some kind of other, other outbreaks. We, of course, these are not, uh, outbreaks are not only related to disease, we have misinformation, and many other things. So that's just it. Yes, misinformation and conflict due to information. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay. Good evening. okay, good evening. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, just like some persons have said, I've actually, like, um, while I was growing up, do it actually here in Nigeria, some part of Cross River State, we actually stayed. The problem I noticed there is um education access. Sometimes some some of us we travel across beyond two village to be able to get to a community where there is a school. And the school is not as if it's that's quite okay. So some cases, some communities, it actually distance to get to education and it's not still not adequate enough to serve for the purpose of those around, let alone those that are coming from afar. Thank you.
Um, is your mic? I think I'm asking you to unmute if you want to speak. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm from a riverine area and more especially my own place. We only have in my community, we don't have access to access, access to road. We don't have lights. And the school, the only school we have in my community is the is like is will I say it's not functioning. And over the years, most of my people travel across to neighboring villages to school. And sometimes they don't even have access because. We don't have a good road. We follow through track and the rest of them. So it's quite difficult for most persons in, apart from my community, there are other communities that have the same challenges, just the, just the same way of my own community because they don't have access to these facilities because governments have not been able to, you know, give, give them those access, even if those access were there before, but it's very, very difficult for them to have access to these facilities just because of the nature of the environment and the rest of them. So those are the areas. Uh, All right, um, thank you all. Um, sorry, I was on mute. Um, so like I was saying earlier on, we're all part of the solution um, and we have to think about our agency when we think about how we can basically solve these problems and one way we can do this is to ask some questions um, and questions have like a lot of power so these are some of the questions that we can ask what is the problem like I said earlier on um, another one is what are the root causes of the problem that we see um, who is to blame for this um, problem? Um, and I don't necessarily ask this question, who is to blame, so we can play the blame game and say, you know, it's just the government to blame. But so we understand the relationship between the, the people who are supposed to offset this duty that they have. Um, and I guess like what is happening in reality. So we can trace back to see, well, who is doing this or who can do this? Um, and for us, as example, um, if, for example, the government is not doing adequately what they need to do, we know that the little that we can do and may not be so little, but it can make a big impact in someone else's life. Um, another thing to consider is like, why are they to blame, for example? Is it because maybe corruption? Is it because they don't have adequate finances? Um, and therefore, when we think about what we can do, um, do we need to be people who are um, people of integrity, for example, so we don't do exactly what we're telling or we're criticizing other people for doing? Um, do we need money, for example, to solve some of these problems? Um, the next one, which is like pretty practical, is um, what have you tried that hasn't worked? So, you know, there's a problem. Um, have you even tried something? Have you even tried to be a solution? Um, and if it hasn't worked, why hasn't it worked? Was it because you didn't have enough resources or was it because um, you didn't have enough collaboration around you, other people you could rely on to make sure that that solution was more thorough and more sustainable? Um, another question is maybe why hasn't this problem been able to um, be fixed yet? Um, so we also have to think um, about some of the questions that we can be asking. And I would say that, um, let's all set a goal to ask better questions um, in our, I guess like in our quest to be part of the solution to these educational deficits that we see. Um, you know, there's some, so yeah, some questions that I guess like culturally people will say you shouldn't ask, but I guess what questions help you do is to see that there is a way forward. If you're able to speak about something, you're able to define the problem and you're able to recognize that this is a possible way that I can go, um, then you can actually do something about it instead of just complaining about it, for example. Okay, sorry, loads of activities, but this is also another activity. So basically let's define the problem a bit more thoroughly. 
Um, so what can we see? We can see that there are gaps in educational provision, and we can also see that there's educational inequality. Um, so I want us to think about some of the root causes. What are some of the root causes to the gaps in educational provision, for example? You can put it in the chat um, so we can see. What are some of the root causes of um, gaps in educational provision? Yes, um, Emanuela, poverty. Um, what else? Corruption, yes. Any other things? A lack of development in some rural areas, definitely. Anything else? Bad leadership, access, yes. Inadequate educational facilities. Definitely. Any more? Ignorance. I think that's a the big one as well. Poor policies, nepotism. Yeah, some cultures also don't support education, which is also true. Um, we have insecurity. It can be food insecurity. It can be financial insecurity. Maybe even personal insecurities. Um, leadership deficiencies. Um, yeah, thank you. So those are some of the root causes. Um, so what therefore are some of the effects of, I mean, I've given you some of the answers, but what are some of the effects therefore of um, the gaps in educational provision? So the answers that I've given here are, and um, we see a lack of social mobility. So people can't move up. So if we've identified that one of the root causes of um, education is poverty, then when there's gaps in educational provision or their educational inequalities, we basically see a lack of social mobility, which also leads to cycles, cycles of poverty and deprivation. Um, any other thing? Any other thing in terms of like effects of, effect of um, gaps in educational provision? Yes, thank you. There's a lack of development. Anything else? Yeah, thank you, Hilda. There's an increase in teenage pregnancies and unsafe abortions. Yeah, there's retarded societal growth. There's lack of information. There's increase in social vices and I guess social violence in general as well. There's a lot of stagnation. Um, there's outbreaks in conflicts due to misinformation. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, there's lack of interest on the part of students. Yeah, that's true as well. There's limitations to opportunities. There's lack of development. Okay. Right. Moving on. Oh, also another one. Um, there's an underutilized future workforce. Um, if we think about, let's use, for example, Nigeria. Um, Nigeria has an increase in youth population. If there are gaps in educational provision, then later on, when you need people, I guess, to be in the workforce, they will just be underutilized. Um, so that's like another effect. Okay, um, this slide is mainly talking about education, um, and educational rights. And the reason I'm coming to talk about educational rights is for us to know that there are legal provisions that mean that um, people have the rights to edu uh, an education. So education is not a privilege, it's actually a right. Um, however, I do want to say that just because something is true in law doesn't necessarily mean that is the same in, in actual reality, like in fact, so de jure and de facto. But it's still important to know that if the law has given you the right to do something, at least it's recognized. So you have that right anyway. Um, and it means that the public do, um, the public bodies 
um, also have to discharge that right. As to whether they do it is a different question, but it's just good to know. Um, so some of the international conventions on education include the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, um, the International Convention on Economic Social Rights, um, Article 13, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, and then specifically um, for Africa, we have the Regional Convention, so that's the Charter on Human and People's Rights, 1981, the Charter on the Welfare, on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, um, Article 11, um, the Protocol to the African Charter um, and the People's Rights, and that's specifically the right of women um, in Africa, and then the Youth Charter. So these are all the rights, and I guess like there, there are many of them, um, but people do have a right to education, um, just to, I guess, like make that clear. Right, like I've said earlier on, um, this is a lovely picture of the African leaders um, at the AU. Um, states have an obligation um, to fulfill educational need, but we see deficits um, and you have basically chosen to be part of the people who fill that gaps and stand in as educators. Um, and like we were saying earlier on, even if your proposals don't get chosen um, later on, and you are able to submit a very, very good proposal, please, please go ahead and do it because the educational need is massive. And I'm sure that people who you wish to affect um, really do need what you have to say and really do need like the intervention you hope to bring um, in their lives. And I guess like for me, this is personal because like I say, some of the skills that I have in public speaking, in like writing policy, reading policy, criticizing policy is because someone looked at me and said, well, I would invest my time and my money to do in this leadership program and, and I, I was I was I took part in it so yeah please do go forward and try to embrace this whole process of actually helping other people um in need basically so um we've talked about um the problem I'm going to skip through some of this because I've already said most of that but how are we going to solve the problem um yeah it starts with you it starts with your choice it starts with your agency um if not us then who if not now then when um i wanted to do a quick activity this is not a very interactive activity but if you have a paper and pen um i want you to think about who you are um your identity um and the reason i want to i want you to think about that is because you need your identity or like you need to assess your identity to holistically achieve this mission um so basically i'll show you what i want this to look like so you basically get a paper and pen um and you make like concentric circles and in those concentric circles um you basically put you in the middle you put your if you like your the ethnic group that you're from um, if you think that's very important to your identity and um, then you put where you're from um in africa um i'm from west africa then you put, of course, Africa. If you're also not from Africa and you're still on this boot camp, you're welcome. And then you put the world. And then, okay, so let me show you how that looks like. One, two. So it will look something like this. Oh, like this. So that will be you. And then that will be your tribe. So I am half Fante and Ashanti. And then the next one will be West Africa. And then the next one will be Africa. And then I want you to make, sorry, it's not very clear, but I want you to make links. It doesn't even have to be physical links, but I want you to make mental links um, for you to think about your positionality, like where you are, the spheres of influence that you have in these different circles. So for example, you, um, in maybe your family, you in your school, you in your community, and what kind of power do you have? Then you think about, well, you maybe in your tribe, in your state, in your country, what kind of power do you have? Then you as a West African, you as a Southern African, you as an Eastern African, you as a Northern African, whatever, um, and then you as an African. Um, and then, oh, sorry, lastly, um, you as a global citizen of the world, because you also live in the world. So I don't know if you can see. So you as a global citizen of the world, and just think about the different, how you hold power in all of those spaces. 
so like what you can do like what is possible for you to do asserting your identity within the different circles um so this is not a, a talking exercise this is a very reflective exercise um because we can have um, a lot of impact on so many different levels um and we can basically use that or use this the the influence that we have in different spaces to affect different people so i'll give you about like a minute or so um to just do this exercise if you can do it with a paper and pen that's very good visually and um, if you can do it mentally that's fine but just like one minute to think about your positionality in the world Okay, um, I hope that exercise meant something to someone um, in terms of just thinking about the different, your positionality and how you hold power in different spaces. Okay, to the next. This is also another activity um, and it's thinking about your strengths. But I don't think we'll have a lot of time to focus on this activity, but um, the presentation has been sent to everyone's email. Um, and if, it, if you haven't received it, please let us know. Um, but you can come back and in your own time, you can think about who you are and your strengths. So you can basically ask things like, you know, what energizes you and what are you good at? Um, what are your weaknesses and um, how do you stay like motivated things like this so you can really get to grasp grasp um um how basically what you're good at um and how you can use those things to really help you when you're training other people um so of course when you're training other people you need to be a good public speaker but you don't necessarily have to be a good public speaker to be able to train other people um so maybe you're good um, at, like visual design like we talked earlier on when we did the activity the break um when we did the icebreaker um some people love to do visual designs um so that can be part of your um your project designing something that um, young people can see and relate to so just think about who you are what your strengths are and how your strengths can um, basically help you when you're training other young people um like i said we won't have time to do this one so you can come back to it and you know do that okay so yes it's important that you're able to I guess like transcend yourself to become who you need to become um, in order to do the things that you have set your mind um, to do basically um, and the reason I'm using transcend yourself is because maybe for you before the beginning of this week, some of the things that our wonderful speakers talked about, maybe you were not very like, you were not well versed in them. So for example, content creation or doing preliminary online research or public speaking um, or writing a proposal. Um, so it means that all the skills that you've learned this week, you should be able to, I guess, like 
transcend yourself to become who you need to become um to actually practice these So you can actually practice these skills so that you can basically help train other people um, in, a, in a really productive, um, impactful way. Okay, so this is basically time to do a quick summary of what was learned over the last few days um, and these are like gems so yeah I'll just be doing like a quick summary for those who weren't here for people who were here it's just to like you know give you a summary of what you you may have heard already so our first session was on public speaking um, and the basics of public speaking and um, we had like an acronym AMS so audience message and strategy your strategy can be humor illustration stories analogies demonstrations writing calling out the audience there are many and the more you practice the better you get at using these different strategies um we had different public speaking codes in terms of um, appearance dressing well in terms of the gestures that you use um in terms of managing the stage walking from one end of the stage to the other to take up space so people can feel your presence in terms of eloquence how you use your vocabulary to articulate the ideas that you have in your head in terms of the energy and the passion that you have um confidence knowing that you have something important to say and people will listen to you because you have something important to say um, and practice practice makes perfect we all, um we also talked about how to connect with your um your audience establishing your credibility um finding the most appropriate way to engage with the audience that you're you're targeting and making sure that you're well rehearsed and then managing your fear and anxiety as well. And then there were other tips as well. Um, owning your confidence, be clear and simple. Always keep your audience in mind. Know your subject thoroughly. Know what you're talking about. Be well researched. Tell a story, add humor and be brief. The next one was about online research. So you could use Wikipedia and you could use the links at the bottom to reference what you need to reference. You could use a control F to find what you need to find. You could use an advanced um, Google search as well. Um, we also talk about different sources of information, Quora, Reddit, Pinterest, even TikTok as well um and then others like youtube Coursera. so there was there was so much in terms of um online research and where to find stuff then the next one was about generating reports um from your outreaches so just almost similar to public speaking you have to have your audience in mind um but this is the audience of those who are actually going to read the report um, and thinking about the purpose, like who are your readers, what's the purpose of the report, why is the report needed, um, and what information you need to include, um, what information is relevant to the report as well. So these were some of the essential features of a report, simplicity, brevity, relevant, um, stylic, stylistic issues um, that people may get wrong when they're actually writing a report, the, the use of an active voice, um, thinking about it being grammatically correct and um, using formal expressions as opposed to informal expressions and um, writing names um, and pronouns in the proper way and um, the use of paragraphs to make sure that there's a clear sequence of, of your logic when you're explaining what you need to explain. Um, and there were other things, um, what you can include in your report, for example, how your project was financed, um, the coverage who was actually affected by your um your outreach um how your outreach was even promoted um thinking about an evaluation of the success what your greatest strengths were and what your challenges were and some recommendations as well and then this was um a format that you could use so like i said all of this was sent um to the participant so you can have time to really go over it um if you have more to say um or to you you have more that you want to go over 
Um, and then there was content creation. Um, content creation was all about avoiding mediocre content um, so that this is content that is very relevant to the people that you wanted to basically impact. So the five W's of content creation, why are you creating, who is your audience, what do you want to achieve, when and how are you going to develop the content and where are you going to publish this content. Um, so Mauli did really well in showing other places that you could basically make your content. Um, so not just within this this field, which is like grant writing and getting a proposal, but even in like academia and public speaking as well. Okay, so once we have thought about how we can be a solution, we basically need to gather um, and amass our resources. So these resources could be financial. Um, but I think one thing I also want to challenge all of us to do is to think about how we can also develop our own resourcefulness. So sometimes it's not about, oh, I need to go out there to find resources. Like you may have what you need. You just haven't um, managed it in a way that means you're resourceful. Like you can do more with the little that you have as well. Okay. So finally, the impact fund. I'm going to take my time to really explain this in detail. And I'm going to also give um, everyone the time to ask questions. So please do ask questions. If I'm going too fast, again, please let me know. Um, but I will definitely take my time in explaining all of this. Right, so, Alpha. Um, yep. Since you'll be moving into this proposal, wouldn't you rather they take a break? Or if they want to, <laughs> do we vote for a break? Maybe yeah. you just go stretch your legs and return because I think she's just going to run straight. No waiting for anybody and finish everything. If you want to take one second break or one minute or two minutes break, to stand up and grab a cup of water or whatever, raise your hands. If we see a, a suitable amount of hands, we'll make a break. Okay. Um, I think we have two people. That is not a good number. <laughs> Democracy does not allow me to go for a break because we have no, we're having more people. Six people are raising their hands now. Right. Anyone else for a break? Okay. All right. So let's take a minute break. Or how many minutes would you rather have after? I would say two minutes. Okay, good. So two minutes. Two, two minutes break. Rush to your kitchen. Grab something from the fridge. Or if you are still at work, grab your co-workers lunch or something disappear with it before they find out so <laughs> right so but when you are coming back this is the core of what we're about to get into now so get your writing materials out and everything all right see you in exactly two minutes
Okay, I think two minutes is up, so we can come back. Um, yes, what I'm going to do is at every slide, I'll give everyone the opportunity to ask a question. So please ask the questions because there's going to be a lot that's going to be thrown at you. Um, but that's also specifically because this part of the session in terms of the impact report is not only applicable to the application form that you're about to fill for actually um, doing the for accessing the impact fund, but it's also basically a skill for other proposals that you may want to write in the future. Um, yes, David, you have a question. Oh, okay, false alarm. Okay, I'm going to start sharing my screen again. Okay, so the impact fund. Um, the ideal candidate or the ideal person who is going to win the impact fund of a hundred US dollars um, should have A, completed all four days of the African boot camp that we're doing, B, received a good evaluation score from the teachers at the boot camp. So the different teachers had different evaluation criteria um, and they asked you to do different things in their sessions. So if you have managed to do that, um, and you received a good score um, from that, that would also add to your overall score when um, the panel is going to be marking your submissions um, to the impact fund. And three, which is, I guess, the most important thing is that you have a very, very good proposal. Um, the proposal or how to write the proposal, we covered that um, in a session on proposal writing by Jeff. Um, and in that session, basically everything that you need to write the proposal was in that session. So please, if you missed that session or you want a refresher on that session, um, the video is up on YouTube um, and the PowerPoint presentation has been sent to all participants already. Right. This whole section that I'm going to cover like over the next about six slides um, is basically about planning, monitoring, evaluation, accountability, and learning. Um, how you're going to plan what you're going to write, how you're going to monitor what you'll be doing, how you're going to evaluate what you have done, um, how you're going to have accountability, um, and then of course, what you have learned. Um, so it's a very, very thorough process. So yeah, let's start. So, this is a screenshot of the application form. This is how it looks like. It hasn't really changed that much. And you have already been sent the document. Um, so yeah, it tells you what the fund is about. It tells you the project timeline. In the project timeline, there's the deadline um, that is there. And then there's also the award date. So there's going to be a virtual award gala that's going to happen where the person who has received the fund will be invited and, you know, the prize will be given, essentially. So there's, there's the project timeline. Then there's the fund requirement. So all your submissions must have a clear strategy and strategic plan of action. It must have a specific location and time frame. Um, it must have a specific targeted beneficiary group. Um, so that's why the exercise we did earlier on when I was telling you to think about different kind of different kinds of groups that may have like a low educational provision was quite important because it's very specific and very targeted. Um, and then it should have a thorough analysis and it should have a full costed budget because you have to basically tell us what you're going to use the money for. And it's important that you're trained in how to write proposals, because it's not, like I said, it's not only for the PFF 
impact fund, but it's also for other proposals that you may want to write in the future if that's something you, you want to do. All the projects, so this project types, all the projects must have young people as the focus because this is about training young people. Um, it can be of um, different ages. So it's not, it's not like all the young people have to be 18 years old, all the young people have to be 16 years old. Um, you just have to tell us why you have chosen the age group that you have chosen, basically. Um, what we have chosen here, or the, the age you can start from is 11, and we're cutting it off at 26 years old. Um, and you're engaging them in issues of education and leadership to make that clear is issues of education and leadership now the activities that you wish to do during your project they must be very age appropriate and sensitive to the emotional mental and physical maturity of the group that you're choosing um so basically show some consideration or or show us in your application that you have thought um about why you're choosing these activities and why it's appropriate for the age group that you're choosing. Um, the setting or where you, you choose to do this, um, it's not limited to schools and um, it can happen in religious places of worship. It can happen in other places. We really welcome your creativity. Um, and that's because part of the problem that we're talking about is, you know, um, in some cases, lack of access to education. So if maybe your project is about people or young people who should be going to school but are not going to school clearly we can't expect you to go and find them in a school so that's why we welcome your creativity in thinking about how you can engage the young people and where you will find them where they can congregate for you to do this project that you're thinking about so that's basically page one info page any questions Any questions? Okay, someone has raised their hand, give me a sec. Yes. Hello, Akwa. Good Hello. evening. My name is Ama Wanola. So I would like to ask that um, as regards with um, the age group, if we're saying, or like the social group, if we're saying, for instance, that um, the program can be carried out with, um, in a church or religious setting, it would mean that, um, let's say for instance, I choose to engage the youth in my church. It would also cover a, um, a wide variety. So if for instance, the, the youth in my church are, they have people who are older than 26. Does that pose a challenge since I'm already talking to people who are also within the age target? Hmm. I, no, thank, thank you. I think that's a very, very good question. Um, I guess like you can explain that um, in your proposal to say, well, I'm not going to single like handedly, like just pick out young people and just say, oh, only this group of 10, then I'm going to give them the um, this leadership training. Um, so if you're not coming to create a group where you're only going to an already existing group, I think what we would like you to show is that majority of the group that you're going to fall within the age category of 11 to 26. Um, yeah, I, th I think that would be the, the, the thing to, to show. So it's just like about explaining that in your proposal. Um, so maybe you say about 80% of the people in this group are between the ages of 11 to 26. If you find that maybe over 50% of this group are not within the ages of um, 11 to 26, then that falls outside of the criteria of young and youth. That's just specifically in our definition of young and youth. Um, so what might be useful is that you basically just separate the group. So you go to the existing group and say, well, I want to do a session for people under the age of you know 25 so that yeah that that can be a way to mitigate that but just explain it if majority of the people fall within the age category and if they don't maybe consider like having a smaller group um session i will also point out that we're not really looking for quantity um it's really 
thinking about how you want to intentionally engage with a group of young people that you have identified because they have a specific need. Um, so that's what it is. Someone else raised their hand. Please raise your hand again so I can unmute you. But let me get, oh yeah. Hi. Hello. Yeah, so I just want to ask, um, so obviously, um, when we write a proposal for the projects we're about to do, it means that Precious Fountain Foundation will be partnering with us. Is it fine if, for example, if I'm going to take it to my church, my church would most likely have like a small group that would uh, want to um, collaborate, not necessarily oversee, but collaborate. So is it fine to involve or have more than one partner when we already know that uh, precious uh, foundations most likely want to foresee it. I'm not sure if I'm making myself clear enough. Thank you. I mean, I think I think that's a really good question. Sorry. Um, I'll basically go on to explain how important it is to collaborate um, not just like amongst other participants but I guess I like, collaborate with um, a wide range of stakeholders because young people don't just you know they're not just like some people who are just sitting on some island somewhere by themselves like they exist within communities and um, so I guess like we welcome your collaboration and um, like we said earlier on if you want to speak to someone about your proposal please do reach out um, so you can I guess like talk through what you're thinking about um, and we can talk about like the level of collaboration that you're thinking of um for me i'll say the more the merrier i'm sure that's what um pff would also welcome okay let, let me go to the chat and see anyone else raise their hands okay hi again hello thank you so i'd also like to ask if you already answered my question of if there's a minimum number of participants for the age group. I'd also want to know if, like, considering the fact that even in that large age group, right, 11 and 26, there's like a difference of 25 years, the needs of a child, say, 11 to 13 or 15, they're about are quite different from an adult, say, 18 to 25. So are there specifications for um, what the program, for what, um, the, what problem the program has to solve for each age group? Um, let, let me try to answer some of these questions. Um, I am aware that um, if you're a Christian here, you is likely you go to church and your church has a group a group of young people, depending on how large it is. Um, while we do not think that the largeness of your church um, population is a problem, um, we will not want you to have an easy opt-out in the sense that if your church always has a meeting of young people, it will be too easy for you to just set up an event in line with an event that your church already has. What we are really looking for is for you to be original in creating an event. Now, if your church does not have a regular youth meeting or your church has a regular youth meeting, but you are bringing a new idea, a leadership such, um, seminar or teaching that you are going to anchor and you want PFF to partner with you, that would be very wonderful. But the point is that it should not the originality in the idea should not be lost in the process. In that way, um, it's true that the African Youth Charter defines young people as 18 to 35, <laughs> right? You know, we black don't crack, so we stay young for a long time, <laughs> right? But um, 11 to 26, captures a particular demographic of young people that PFF is interested in. That is people who are in secondary school and undergraduates, majorly. So those are maybe captured by that. 
However, as Apple has mentioned, if you are going beyond that, you have to explain to us. Just make sure your plans are workable and easily um, uh, readable, right? We should see that the plan can work. That is basically what we want to see. Um, will you be excluding people if, for example, you want to do an everybody um, can come event? Why don't you rather plan for an event among a particular demographic that you know that what you are going to talk to will mean something to? Take, for example, if you are going to meet people between 11 and 16, many of them will be between GSS2 if you are in Nigeria. I don't know how they do that in Ghana, <laughs> right? So for GSS2 to XS3, 11 to 16, 11 to 17, that is the class they will be in. Or you do something like 18 to 25, almost all of them will be undergraduates or just recent school leavers. Or you do something with young people in your community. Like I, I saw somebody mention a community in Ghana that has issues with education. Um, why we were mentioning things, a Doron something. So if you do a project in the community, it will really, really, yes, Drobonso. Semeco mentions about the Drobonso area that educational facilities there are not enough and the area is a farming area. Do something with the children or farmers there. Gather them together. I, that kind of idea is something I will quickly run behind because it's going to be totally original and the people in that community may not have seen this before. If Semeco is still on this call and may want to do something, I'll be excited to read what you have to come up with. And ideas like that, very original, meets people that are on the streets, spreads inspiration to them. Those are the kind of ideas that we want. And um, it is not that the ideas for a church, especially if you're in a rural church or in a church that does not have young people meeting together is wrong. But the point is that it should be original, basically. So I, I almost right? I hope that is clear. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you. Um, I was even going to go on and say part two of the fund um, and the application form is your budget estimation, which we're going to talk about. Now, if you're, for example, going to um, target a group of people who are already existing, for example, within a church, um, a church um, setting, um, you basically have to explain how you're going to use the hundred dollars so if your hundred dollars is i'm going to provide food for them or your hundred dollars is i'm going to you know do like goodie bags i'm not sure um in comparison to someone whose hundred dollars might be um to provide maybe like transportation to get to the place because it's very very rural and inaccessible or to provide i don't know like supplies for like a group of people who may have like done like a piece of work and you want to congratulate them and um, when you weigh the two together because one group may be already like existing um, and may have certain resources that are available to them um it, it's it i guess like i'm talking about how you're going to um basically weigh those two financial needs so just just think about how um your proposal will also stand out um in relation to other people's proposal and what they are thinking about doing as well um, any other questions before I move to the budget estimation? None? Okay. Cool. Page two, the budget estimation. So it has your name, the participant name, it has your project title. Oh yeah, we would like you to have a project title. Um, it just makes it, I guess, like easy for us to know the name of the, the, the project, um, maybe give you school bags, something like that was not original, but just have like a project title as well. Um, your total estimation must not exceed the 
dollars. So you have space, you have nine items. If you want to add more, please feel free to add more. Um, so you list what your items, oh sorry, what your expenses will be. Um, like I mentioned, it may be food, it may be supplies, it may be transportation. I don't know, but it just has to be just um, it just has to be justifiable and um, what your expense um is going to be. So think of what you might need. Um, and I would say like also try to, I guess, like spend the money um, because we want to see what you want to use the money for. Um, for each expense, you can then mention how you expect to or how much you expect to spend um, on that thing. So if let's say you say food and you say maybe food is going to cost me $30, $30 please write that down, $30. Um, the first budget um, column, yes, um, that's for the expense in your local currency. So it may be Naira, it may be CD, it might be CIFA, it might be whatever, we are across different African nations. So please write that in your local currency. But also, the reason it's important to write it in your local currency is because, as we all know, inflation, we're just living in a time of a, um, a fuel crisis all over the world, actually. Um, so because you'll be converting the money, please just write it in your local currency so we see the value of what you're what you're basically estimating this um, expense to be. So that's the first one. Then the second one is to therefore then write it in USD. So to convert it from your local currency to USD at the time that you checked. And then please kindly work out the percentage of how much that expense is going to be or how much is going to cost you and how much that is going to be in the total budget. I'm not personally a mathematician but um when you add the total um you'd surely be able to figure out what budget of your or what percentage of the budget that expense is going to take um it doesn't have to be like totally accurate but maybe 20 percent here 10 percent here but it all has to add up um at the end when you do your total cool so that's the money part anyone have any questions Okay, so Nicholas has asked, is that is the proposal somewhat of youth empowerment because I'm really lost on what we're writing about? Okay. Nicholas, I'm just going to go back for you so we explain this. So the whole point of um, the boot camp was to equip everybody here um, with different skills so that they can go and train other people in their community um, to basically solve the educational deficit that I talked about earlier on. Um, the proposal is basically what you think you can do in your community or in a place that you've identified that has maybe an educational deficit or something you can do to empower the young people in that place. So you are basically writing a proposal of your idea um, and they must fit to these requirements. So the fund requirement um, and the best proposal would basically win 100 US dollars to basically do this project that they have proposed in the proposal that they sent. Um, and that's that's it. Um, I hope I hope I've explained that thoroughly. If I have, just give me like a thumbs up, Nicholas. Oh yeah, thank you. Right, um, anyone else, let's go to the next page. Anyone else have any questions about the money part? No? Okay, so that's the money. Oh. Oh, okay, someone has asked, when are we expected to make the submission? Um, so on the first page, it talks about the deadline. So there's an imp there's an implementation um, timeline, or there's a there's a range of dates where you should have done your implementation, or you should have implemented your project by. Um, so 
basically theoretically is from the beginning of the virtual awards gala all the way to the end of August 2022. So that's when you should have done your project by as the first date. The second date is the deadline for the proposal. So that's in two weeks. So that's on April the 30th, 2022. And then the award ceremony, that's to say who has won this award is on May the 7th, 2022. So that is a week after the submission. So that gives us the time to basically mark the proposals. Just to put your mind at ease, the marking of this fund is going to be quite rigorous like as in it's not going to be one person marking it we'll probably like have one marker a second marker um and there'll be scores allocated so this is not you know any case of nepotism or i'm just giving the money to my best friend um it's quite rigorous in that regard okay cool next page this is the actual project proposal. This is how it looks like in the application form. So you write your name, you write your project um, title, you write the start date and you write the end date. Now this next box says, did you complete all, it shouldn't be five days, sorry, it should be four days. Did you complete all four days of the training? If you completed all four days, please let us know, just say yes. If you didn't complete all the four days of the African boot camp and um, please say no and if you say no please let us know why and um, because you'll be given marks if you completed all five days of the training um, and that's because the skills that have been shared and taught during this training is, is going to enable you to of course become um, a trainer um, or is going to enhance the skills that you already have and um, so it's quite important that you had completed these five days but it's not the end of the world if you didn't you just lose like a bit of marks at that specific point so that's that one and then please write the total project cost your estimate um if we go back to sorry if we go back to the budget estimation um like i said if please try to think of all the things that you can spend the money on but it's also not by force to spend the money if you don't necessarily need to spend the money. I'm sure the hundred pounds, um, sorry, the hundred dollars will still be given. Um, but if it, all your costs come up to 97.2, then they come up to 97.2. So just let us know how much it costs you. The rest is basically still a prize to you for winning. Um, so just let us know the total project cost. Now, this is the, the important part, the project summary. So you're basically going to include the details of your project. Um, that's the people that you're going to be targeting, where they are found, why you have chosen them, and why what you're going to do is going to be impactful for them, and why what you're going to do is going to solve a need that they have. Or in our case, there's a deficit, and you're basically standing in that gap. That's basically the project summary. We haven't included a word count in the project summary for now. Actually, we just haven't included one um, because we want you to have the ability to write as much or I guess, yeah, as much as you want to write. Um, but of course, being quite succinct and quite concise in what you're writing, um, but showing us that you've really engaged um, or you've really thought through the people that you're going to be engaging with. So I've said um, here that it has to have a clear um, plan of action. That should be a specific location, a time frame. But remember, that time frame has to be before August 2022. Um, a targeted beneficiary group. Um, you can also include um, preliminary research findings. So, what kind of research have you done to show? that these group, or this group of people actually have the problem that they have? Have you spoken to people? Has anyone contacted you? Are you yourself part of this group of people and you can see that they need this kind of help? Um, and then um, some content ideas. How are you going to creatively you know, come in and inspire um, or give these leadership trainings that you're thinking about doing for your project? That's basically the project summary. Any questions?
Um, I have before you, let me see the chat again. Okay, so the first question is before when, okay, I'll go back to talk about the deadlines. And the next question is, can you recap on the first thing said about the project summary? Okay, I'll come back. Let me go back to the deadline to say before when. Okay. The first deadline you should know is that your project, that if you get the fund, or if you don't get the fund, but you still want to do your project. No, actually, if you get the fund, your project has to be done before August, 2022. For everyone who wants to submit this application to get the fund, please submit it um, before April 30th. So that's this, yeah, that's basically this month, but that's in two weeks. So we get, we're giving you two weeks to think about the proposal and write it. And then you will know about who is who has won this thing um, during the, virtual awards ceremony on the 7th of May, which is a week after. So that's the first thing um, regarding deadlines. Then the second thing is about the project summary. So your project summary should include your plan of action, what you want to do. It should include your specific location. Okay, I want to do this project in Danselman, Accra, Ghana here at this location in this community center um, or, or I want to do it in this school um, or I want to do it you know in this church just a specific location um, and time frame maybe you're going to do an event that happens on a specific date so I plan to do this event on this date so you include the date, the date. Or maybe you're going to do a series of workshops and you say, I plan to do four workshops. I will do one on this day, one on this day, one on this day, and one on this day. You know, it's up to you. So just put the time frame there as well. And then the targeted beneficiary group, that is who is actually, or who are you targeting this event at? I'm targeting this event um, at 11 to maybe 14 year old. I'm targeting this event at 15 to 16 year old in this community. I'm targeting this event at 18 to 25 year old in this community. So a specific target group. Um, then you can include your pre preliminary research findings. Well, I know that this group need X, Y, Z because da, 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 da. Um, or oh, I know that this group is vulnerable to these things. This is why they have a low educational um, access. Um, and I plan to solve this by holding this event or by doing a series of these workshops or by doing something creative with them. Many other things you can think of. Um, and then you include some of your content ideas. Maybe you want to do something that's very visual. Maybe you want to work with um, young people who have special needs so you want to do something maybe art and craft I don't know but whatever you have in your head please include that there but it has to be very specific and has to be very clear yeah I have two questions in the chat let me see so someone says I don't quite get you on the preliminary research findings okay so the reason is because um there was a session on preliminary research findings that happened, I think like two days ago. Um, so if you weren't there for that session, um, the YouTube link would be sent out so you can go through that session, what was talked about in that session. Um, since the project impact is currently something I'd like to ask you what I'm to do. Hmm. Okay, that's a very, very good question. Um, in terms of the project impact, I will come and talk about the project impact. But what you have basically said is, a, is very important because what we're basically deciding to do is to um, give someone the money to create this event or to do this, um, do this event. And I guess like it comes with a lot of trust um, on PFF side um, in terms of like the, the fund because we want to. We want you to feel empowered, um, knowing that you have been given this money, and you have a responsibility to 
do this project and we'll be with you every step of the way anyway um, because you have to make account for the money which I'll come and talk about shortly okay can I move on from the project proposal or do we have any more questions okay thank you next right technically that's the end of the project proposal so if you want to be considered for the money and um, to do this project that's all you that's basically what's on the application form page one page two page three but there's more stuff on the application form but those things I'll talk about now but this is basically what you need to fill the most important thing you need to fill is the project summary here so this page the project proposal page and the budget estimation page the other things are for later cool so we have here the project plan you wouldn't see this on your application but this is more about if you want to have the skill um or what are some of the other things that you can start thinking about if you want to have a very very good proposal um, and Jeff talked about some of these things earlier on um, in his session um, so yeah to get you in the in the mindset for this so um, you can include why so what is the problem that you wish to address what evidence have you found to show that this problem is a problem um, and you basically doing this project means that you're coming to support the needs of the people um, what change do you want to see um, by the end of your project? Um, is this change that you you plan to see is a smart? Is it specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time bound? And um, how do you think you can measure this change? Um, how are the activities that you're basically going to do in your project? How is it going to achieve the change that you want to see? So these are very specific um, when you're thinking about other grants that may not necessarily come from PFF as well. Um, you can also include, of course, who is your target audience? Where are you going to find them? How will these people benefit from your, from your project? Um, you can define them by age, location, ethnicity. Like there's so many ways you can define a group of people. Um, when was the time frame for your project? Um, if you want, you can include your research stage. You can in include your activity stage. You can in include your implementation stage. Um, and then we'll talk about monitoring and evaluation later um yeah where is this project going to take place what area if applicable okay in your application form you also have your SWOT analysis and this is to be completed at the end of your project um so this is basically to think about your strengths your weaknesses the opportunities that you had and the threats that you had so this is much more thorough and much more detailed for you to measure the impact of the work that you have done like i'm saying the all these things that we're showing you is not just for the um pff impact fund um but it's for other funds as well if you want to um, apply for them these are some of the questions that um the people who will read through your proposal tend to look at as well okay i'm just gonna quickly end there is there anyone who has any other question on what I've said, wants me to go through something. Yes. Hi again. Hi. So um, I need you to clarify the when again. So um, you mentioned the time frame. I'd like to ask if this, like for, for instance, the research and development would happen while I'm writing the proposal. Mm -hmm. Um, so of course before, before the implementation oh okay okay so the monitoring and evaluation phase so that means that the project can span a time frame it just yes. has a deadline before which you can which you must complete the project right of course yes okay thank you no worries okay any other questions? Okay, sure. Um, right, so that's the end of the impact fund stuff. Um, just to quickly end, I know I've taken a lot of time, but I just wanted to make sure everyone really understood 
um, what the impact fund was and what we needed you to do. Um, so throughout this journey, um, please do immerse yourself in the opportunities that come through this program and the other opportunities that PFF has. Um, some of them are directly for yourself and some of them are not for yourself. Um, if you see something that you think, oh, my friend might need this, please send on the information to them because we're really trying to solve problems which are bigger than ourselves and we need a whole lot of people as well and um, make a difference some of the things that you may do might affect only your community but the people that you affect might go and affect other people so don't think that you can't make a difference um p push yourself and push yourself out of your comfort zone um to do something you know like authentic something original um something that would connect with the need that people have be authentic, be yourself. Um, don't try to really be like someone else. And um, you can learn from other people, but just stick to who you are. Like who you are is very important. Um, connect and collaborate. Your network is your net worth. Um, so like I said, add me on LinkedIn. If you want to add other people um, on LinkedIn, speak um, on WhatsApp. Um, because the ideas that we have, it's not only us who can be the solution but we can be the solution is together with other people um and take control no one is really going to come and solve the problems that affect you to be fair um it's really you um if you choose to make that decision so that's it um the last thing i'll ask us to do is if you can if you have a blank piece of paper um and you have managed to listen to me talk all this while um, please write on the blank piece of paper, I am now a PFF ambassador. And if you can, please turn on your screen because we want to take a picture of everyone holding their papers, if you can. Um, and we we'll just respectfully take a screenshot um, because part of the impacts that we're making as PFF is also quite visual because we can also inspire other people by the stuff that we're doing. So yeah, if you can just a piece of paper and just write I'm now a PFF ambassador and then just hold it up to the screen and we will take a screenshot Yeah, hi, Kevin. Good evening. Actually, right about here now, there is no bar, so there is no way I can speak. It's, that's all right. It's fine. Thank you so much. I don't know if my writing is clear. Yeah, I think we can see. Okay, so if we all um, have written what we have and we have light and we can share our... It you need to stop presenting so that you can see. Oh, yes, let, let me do that. Okay. All right, um, Jeff, uh, would you be uh, able to take the screenshot? Well, I think if if I do, if I have to, if I if I shade mine a little, it can become more. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, no worries. I'll take the screenshot. So are we all ready? Three, two. Wait, wait. Won't you wait oh. for me? <laughs> right. All right. 
Three, two, one, smile. All right, thank you. Right. <laughs> okay, I hope I hope the picture came out. If it didn't come out, we have the recording, so it will. <laughs> um, so now I would like to welcome uh, the professor to take over, to give you some notices. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. Okay, so let's wait for the professor to come. <laughs> Do you have another professor? Or is it me? <laughs> right. Uh, it's you now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I want to thank everyone for making it up to this point. I know we're seven minutes after the time we budgeted, right? And I'm sorry for that. But don't you think it was worth it? Do you think it was worth it? Now, um, well, nobody is answering, but that's okay. I know you feel like it's worth it. So <laughs> I, would, um, I would say this. If you have a very good proposal and you know the place you are in is not um, a very urban area or a slum in an urban area, that is to say, if you are, let's use Lagos, and I'm sorry, Nigerians, I, I have to use Lagos. So if you're in Lagos <laughs> and you're in the slum areas in Lagos, you want to do an event that will capture a lot of people and you think that $100 is not enough, write a very good proposal and send it to me. Send it to me straight up. <laughs> but you have to do that within the two weeks so that because pro PFF has a project that we plan usually for summer, so we can adopt your project for the summer. That will be our summer event. And then um, we have a little bias for events that are done in rural areas. Um, we can come and do learning to read, reading readiness, and um, share materials for students like um, sandals, school materials and all that. So let us know, write a very good proposal, tell us where that event is happening. We'll come there and do it with you. I am particularly interested in that um, Ghana area. If you have something about that, let me know. If you are in any other place in Nigeria, you have a very good proposal that you have written, let us know. Otherwise, stick to the $100 budget, right? <laughs> Stick to the $100 budget. We want you to do something in your community. You know, do something in your community. That's what we want. If you have questions on how to do your budget, um, please find Jeff on LinkedIn, on WhatsApp, on email. Um, Jeff, I, 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 don't, I think Jeff is not so strong. He's not feeling very well. But if you can, you can drop your email and details on the chat again so that everyone can find you and ask him questions so that's his email address is right in the chat you can also ask me a question my name is christian sopruchi many of you anybody in case you don't know me my name is Sop. so um this is my email address uh, okay so if you want to contact me, you can send a message to the PFF email. You can talk to me through the group we've created. I'm one of the admins there. Bisola is also one of the admins there. The only of us who get to, you've already gotten to us. Any of the teachers, when you are making a report, if you want a report help, Gideon will always be there to help. You can talk to him. If you want to create content and you don't know how to arrange it, Emmanuel Mauli is there. I know he's an Oxford scholar, but he will make sure he speaks to you in regular English. So <laughs> just contact him. Emmanuel, you can also drop your addresses on the chat if you want, um, so that people can contact you. I'm sure you can contact Emmanuel through LinkedIn or through email. If he's too busy, just let me know. I'll find him for you, any of them. I can find any of them for you. Don't worry. Just let me know. We'll find them for you. 
you have two weeks to look around your community and find an event, right? Find something you can do in your community. You have been able to point out that you have um, problems around your area. Many of us, and this, is, this broke my heart so much. We are black people, we're Africans, we are talking to each other. We know we have issues around our neighborhood. We identify these issues, be a part of the solution now. Find a project you can do, no matter the amount of people. It doesn't need to be 100 million people, 20 people, 10 people, no matter the amount of people you have there, let us know. Now, if you want to do, as I said, if you are, some of the questions are dry, like the question on how much you have to put for this, you have to put for that. Please try to contact Gideon for all of that. And um, Gideon, if he's okay with you, can you drop your email? Or has he done that already? Okay, I feel like he has done that. Gideon's email is already in the chat box as well. If you want to contact him for any questions you have on setting out your finances, so that you can be able to get your results. Please try to meet him, right? Um, <clears throat> you can also meet me. I'm like your one-stop shop for anything you need. Let me repeat. Our projects have a deadline in two weeks. By the 30th of April, we expect all the proposals that we'll be looking at for this event, for the awarding of the impact fund in our Gmail address, Precious Fountain Foundation at gmail.com. After the two weeks, we'll take a period of one month to mark everything. Yes, the deadline is the end of April for submitting your proposal. We'll mark everything and then we'll do a virtual awards gala by May 7, where we'll give everybody that deserves the award their award, and then we can decide which of the um, um, which of the projects that we've seen that we can escalate and do later and which one we will fund now, right? I sent, um, I sent an email for you to, um, I sent a, a, what do you call it? a Google doc, the Google form um, for, we're trying to do a research based on what we've done so far. In your group page, please try and fill those forms. <clears throat> now, for those of you who were able to send your essays to us, if you sent us your essays, this is the announcement. Those who have moved to the next stage have received an email telling them that they moved to the next stage. We are going to take your essays and paste on our IG page, and then we'll leave them for voting. Um, what the person who is coordinating this event, the essay articles and everything, and the award of the $50 coming with it would be Gideon. So um, just know that PFF is paying close attention to that as well. You are going to get an email from us telling you that your essays are up on the IG page and then we can have people vote for them. Um, you are all going to be PFF ambassadors. We will be giving the $100 and the consolation prizes to a select number of people. However, there are Proposals that we expect to see that will be very good, but we may not be able to fund it. Maybe because our money has finished, right? We are not Tony Lumeli or Dangote, right? Or any other reason for that. We will try to give you as much help as we can. We will have to send everybody who makes a good proposal a tag, give you a tag. We will help you speak to people. If, for example, you are in a region where we have any influence, we help you speak to people so that your project can go well. If you want the presence of PFF in your event, please let us know. If you want the presence of PFF, let us know. I don't mind flying to anywhere I can come. I can enter night bus, I can enter boat, I can enter ship, 
course, anything. We'll come there, we'll follow you to your event, and we'll make sure that that event happens. We're able to travel. I, for example, I travel, I go anywhere. I have friends that travel with me. Many of us in PFF, we just like finding our ways to events, especially if the place is a rural area. We want to spread hope and insight to people. Now, fill our questionnaire. I've talked about that. Uh, yes, other PFF projects that will be coming up, we'll have a training on getting scholarships. Um, we've done that last year, we'll do it again. Um, applying for scholarships, checking for schools and all that. We'll also be doing a training for academics. If you're an academic and you want to learn how to write papers to be published in international journals, we'll also be doing a project on that. And then we're having an essay competition coming up. And um, yes, and we'll be having a major event in the summer around August. Um, we may be looking at adopting one of the proposals here on a larger scale, but then we we'll look at how it's written and be sure that it is something that we can do. If you have taken note of everything we've talked to, you realize that um, the training we gave you, we are not merely focused on giving you training for the purposes of the bootcamp. Jeff went way deep in teaching about proposals. If you are somebody that is involved in grant writing, you are going to find many of the things Jeff said very serious and important. Also, what um, Gideon talked about, even though it's dry, the idea of having to arrange your reports and be able to generate reports, those are really fundamental things. And they are not questions that you can answer only if you want a PFF fund. If you want to apply for funds and all that, these are a good place to start. These are a good place to start. AFWA has done a very wonderful presentation, taking us through each step. Um, and I'm, I'm excited about the kind of proposals we'll be receiving. And um, yes, I know that Tony Elumelu and Dangupi started somewhere. Well, maybe. <laughs> we are not business people in KFF, we are not out for profit, but um, we want to be able to ensure that we make a difference in just one person's life. So if, for example, you can reenact the change you have, that you've gotten from this conference, these seminars, um, somewhere around you to two more people, that spreads the influence and keeps the world going. And yes, um, we are not afraid of partnership because we don't aim to have profit. There is really nothing for us to protect. So we give away everything for free. All of the people that spoke in this event are very busy people, but I had to beg them all to make our time for this. If we are going to charge, we are going to charge a significant sum to take these trainings, but we'll give it for free. Take it, use it anyhow you want, but make sure that you are making impact and you are spreading inside to people. So um, we'll look forward to hearing from you within the next two weeks. And then um, we'll be bringing the entire bootcamp to a close. But before I do that, I would like to know if anybody has any final questions. And then um, I'll invite the speakers who have already spoken and who are here and want to say anything to say that. So. Do you have any questions? Is there anybody that has any questions? Any final questions that we need to address? Right. So I, I, I think we have everything set. So any of the speakers want to say anything before we conclude? Okay, thank God, what do you want to say? Good evening, everyone. Yes, Karen. I sincerely want to appreciate uh, the speakers and also want to appreciate the organizers for this event. And what, what I want to ask, or I want to, I, I would say is a contribution is, uh, 
aside organizing an event, the, the many of us don't have the idea of how to seek for fund for collaboration. So I was hoping probably they will. Uh, 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 would have given us maybe insights on how to, you know, seek for funds. For instance, if I myself want to organize a program, and probably I want to seek for collaboration, or I want to seek for maybe partnership or funding, how do I intend to go about getting those uh, supports and fund? That is what I have to say. Uh, that that's great. However, that is not within the focus of what we planned for this event, um, applying for grants, funds for events and all that um, is a different issue. The point of our event, as we've explained, is that you should be able to create a leadership exam a event in your community. You should be able to create a leadership event in your community and PFF will support you to the tune of $100. That is all that this event from um, Wednesday till now is targeted at. If we are going to train you on grant writing and sourcing for funds and all that, that is a serious task. And um, it will take more than two hours a day for four days to get, right? However, we have opened the door for you to learn further on this issue. We have started you on this journey. You can learn everything on this on one day. People learn grant writing as a course in the university. Even academics still grapple with this issue. But we have done something here that we have opened up understanding to you. You now know how to answer some basic questions. So this is a journey for you to continue from here. However, the purpose of this training as I said again, is to have you decide on a leadership event for your community and then to allow PFF help you put on this event to the tune of $100. So that is it. Any further questions? Any further questions? Oh, okay. Um, Emmanuel, please go ahead. Oh, not a question, but just um, a concluding statement to thank all the participants for the four days. I mean, it's been excellent having them um, with us, the questions that they've been asking, how they've been engaging. And I can see one who, we spoke of, we spoke almost all the four days <laughs> right so um i mean we really appreciate you guys we know the situation and what it takes to join us from our respective locations but you stay through and we really appreciate you so thank you very much and don't don't, don't mind what sop was saying all those things that you were saying please just feel free to send me an email once you send me an email and i don't even if i don't respond immediately uh please I promise you I'll get back to you. I think I'm I'm speaking for all the speakers. If you send us in the mirror and we don't get, get back to you immediately, that doesn't mean we are ignoring you. Just wait, we'll get back to you. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you so much, Imana. Thank you so very much. I know it is not easy. I usually battle with this problem when I want to put on a Zoom event. I know one of our participants sent a message that there's been no light electric power in his area for a long time and for that reason he would have to log off so it really pains me but i also know that sacrifices we need to be made if we want to make our africa better and then um, i want to appreciate you very much for coming um, i want to appreciate afwa for a very nice session thank you very much thank you jeff for teaching us two days ago. Thank you, Gideon. We really benefited from you. Jatuma, we appreciate you too. And Tizi Daniels. And for my friends who worked behind the scene to ensure that this event was put on very successfully. Bisola, 
and Yano, I really thank you so much. Especially Pusala made so much significant effort to keep the communication going. I really didn't have so much time, right? <laughs> yes, I know you cook by 6 p.m., that's all right. Um, I really appreciate you too. I really didn't have so much time to sit and follow up everything, but Bisola was really a wonderful help. So thank you, everyone. I will see you in two weeks, not two weeks, in three weeks' time. That is, I'm hoping that your proposal is selected. All right. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.